Hello there, welcome to Brian Lomax Movie Talk and another patron requested review. Yes, I, I'm on my last one now. I, I was trying to get all these out of the way by the end of December really, but we've, we've run over into January. This one is from Anders Eden um, and the film that he's requested is a 2008 film starring Thora Birch called Train, which is directed by Gideon Raff. And I gotta say, Anders, what the hell did you just make me watch? This is not a good film, mate. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, you know, it, it's gonna happen from time to time. Um, and and I, I don't know if uh, Anders knew that I wasn't gonna like this and that's why he's, he recommended it. You never know, you never know with these patron requests. But yeah, this, this, is, this is not my, not my bag. It's got to be said. Um, right. Okay, so let's get into it. So we've got a bunch of characters. And I say characters in the loosest of terms. We've got a bunch of people, generics. They're, they're making their way across foreign lands. <laughs> um, as part of a, a wrestling tour with their college. They're, they're like... Oh, they're, 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 they're in a tournament, anyway, or some kind of world tour. Who cares? They're going across, trying to, trying to get to their next destination, to have these wrestling matches. A group of these characters stop off one night, they get off the train, and they go into this town because they've been invited to this, uh, this party. And they thought, yeah, let's go and drink and do what early 20s, late teens do in movies of this ilk. We'll go and we'll party and we'll drink and we'll have sex. Um, and you know they're going to die. They get off the train. They go into the nightclub. Get up to shenanigans. And when they get back, the train has gone. Oh, no. So they have to get a ride on another train. And some dodgy looking woman who's just like clearly up to no good kind of helps them onto this other train says yeah if you get this particular train you'll be able to get to your destination and they do and then suddenly it turns into a, a mix of hostel versus uh, hostel mixed with snowpiercer uh, which may sound like a good idea to to some people i can tell you it's not uh based on the strength of this film it is most certainly not um snowpiercer this isn't and hell, even as someone who cannot stand the Hostel films, um, at least Eli Roth can kind of direct a sequence. Um, he does kind of know what he's doing with the camera, even if I don't particularly like much of what he writes. It's not my bag. But yeah, this, this airs more on the side of Hostel than Snowpiercer. There's certainly the potential there. To, to have more of the class structure element that Snowpiercer has. If you can pay enough money, you get on this train and they'll pick up a bunch of strangers, rob their organs. You know, if you're, if you're blind, they'll take their eyes, give you their eyes. If, if you need a new liver, hey, you've got a new liver. Um, so yeah, there's definitely a, a class thing there. You know, if you, the more money you've got, the more organs you can buy, you fix all your problems. So definitely, definitely a Snowpiercer element. Um, although this was before Snowpiercer, you know, so I, I, I will give it that much. It's not much, but I will give it that. Uh, certainly Snowpiercer did a heck of a lot more with that concept um although it's not entirely that concept just the, the class structure thing but um yeah like i say this airs more on the side of hostel a film i cannot stand so this ain't doing it for me either and the fact that this is directed by someone who clearly doesn't know how to how to make a sequence gel together properly is yeah the editing on this film is terrible there are times when i have no clue what is going on from a geography perspective. Like people kind of go through a door, but have they gone through the door? And then you cut back and you think, well, based on what they're doing here, I think they went through the door, but there's lots of bits like that. There's a, there's a, a fight sequence towards the end of the film that is off the train. It's on a train track. Uh, it's between Thora Birch and this big guy and 
We see it from a low angle where this big guy picks up Thora Birch by the, ne by the neck. And all behind them is beautiful blue sky. Literally, is just, you know, and, and he just he throws her on the ground. And then the camera goes in on them. And then suddenly they're right by the side of the train. Again, geography. What? The, the, whoever. The, Brath, the, Raff, whatever his name is. He just clearly doesn't quite get that you need you need that continuity of geography you need to you need to know where these characters are so that we the audience can can get a fix on where they are so either the train is there or it's not but it's like yeah they're, they're fighting and they're walking away from the train the train is literally behind them now uh he picks her up throws her on the floor the camera cuts to you know the close-up shot and then boom they're at the side of the train it makes no sense and there's loads of little bits like that where clearly the director has no understanding of of, of the geography of these characters and, and where where they are where they should be one good question to ask yourself when you're watching a movie uh, with regards to whether or not it's well written is uh, what do these characters want you know what is what is the what is the driving force of these characters and honestly i don't know i don't know all we are given with regards to thora birch's character is i don't really know if i'm cut out to be a wrestler i but, um, i think i'm gonna quit that's it that is it with regards to what her character is about, what her future is, and none of what happens in the film really has any relevance to that until we get this sequence towards the end where after everything she's been through and she's learned to fight, she gets back into the ring. Well, it's not a ring, is it? It's a mat. She gets back on the mat and gets into wrestling. And it's like we have this final shot where she's all geared up to to face her opponent and she goes running at them and we cut to black what a character arc no no that is that is lame that is literally all the character development there is she doesn't want to be a wrestler anymore at the beginning and then she gets put through all this crap that i don't really want to watch because it's literally just torture palm and yeah that gives her the fighting spirit so we end the film with her triumphantly being a wrestler i don't care why would i care about you being a wrestler like the fact that you have now chosen to go and be a wrestler after all this crap after seeing all your friends butchered actually makes me lose respect for you because Surely, after all this, you would find some higher calling, some higher purpose. You would reach for the stars. The fact that you have your life, the fact that you got out of all of this with your life, that's the choice you make. Oh, I will be a wrestler after all, because I, I can fight. No, that is BS. That is the worst character arc I think I've ever seen in a film. Or one of, put it that way. But literally, every other character in this film, you ask yourself the question, what is it they want? What is it that, that is driving them? And beyond them trying to get to the next wrestling match, which quite frankly, some of them don't even seem to be trying that hard, it, it's, there's nothing. There is nothing there. These are not character characters. They are just meat sacks. They are just literally people waiting to be cut up on screen for I don't know why. And that's the problem with torture porn is I don't understand it. Thora Birch's character isn't even that likable as well. You know, we so sh she has. This boyfriend, who is like the, the main dude on the team, he's the one who always wins his fights and that. She's the one that, he's the one I should say, that she confesses to that she's thinking about quitting the team. And uh, they go to this nightclub and he kind of gets pulled off somewhere with, with, with a mate and these other two women. And this woman's about to, to start 
something of a sexual nature with him. But but he says no. You know, he, he realizes that this is wrong. He turns. He goes. He goes out. So. First of all, you shouldn't really allow yourself to get into that situation. You shouldn't really put yourself in a position where you need to say no. Uh, but the fact that, he, you know, he does, so there you go. But at least he has the strength to say no. And then he comes out and he gets into a bit of a fight with, with this other guy. who's the guy who invited them there. This guy's clearly got a problem. Uh, he's, he's, you know, and I think this, this dude, the boyfriend dude, he is right. This is the thing. He is right to want to make sure his friend, this woman, leaves with them. Because this place is dodgy as... Mm. You know, it's like there's no way they should be leaving there without her. So he is right to do everything in his power to make sure that she comes with them. Now, unfortunately, that, that kicks off a bit of a fight. Now, Thora Birch's character is like, no, no, stop fighting. You're always fighting. You know, meh, meh, meh. So... In that moment, to appease her, he turns away from it. He actually doesn't, you know, he doesn't go there. He turns around and he starts walking away. Um, and then it's this, this the dude that he was getting all up in the face of, he punches him. And then he's got no choice but to defend himself. So he gets into a fight. And then once they're out of there, she literally chastises him for starting the fight. And it's like... He turned and walked away. Like she, she literally says, "You, you can never walk from a, no, never walk away. You've always got to get." He was the one who walked away, and it's just like, I, there's, there's no reason to like this character. She's our central character. She's whiny. She's mopey. She makes accusations that, quite frankly, she, uh, are a little unwarranted and she should be she should have backed him up a bit more in that situation in order to get a friend out of a potentially dangerous situation um and then she accuses him of being the one who starts to fight it's like yeah i'm i'm out i'm out to be honest i don't like you uh just I have nowhere else to go with this film. Uh, if you like torture porn, if you just like seeing people hacked up and you don't really care about them having any kind of character whatsoever, any depth, then this is this is the film for you. Um, it's, it's not for me. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to give it a one out of five because quite frankly, um, other than the... The, the idea itself, having some potential in there, squandered potential, I don't really see anything of any value in this movie. And I would have turned it off about 15 minutes in had it not been for the fact that it was a patron-requested review. Um, Anders, <laughs> I'm so sorry, mate. Uh, <laughs> I do hate I do hate when somebody gives me... A patron requested review, and I I have to slate it. But if I don't like something, I I don't like something, and I I can't I can't pretend that I do just because. Yeah, so I I <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Please don't leave. <laughs> Please carry on being a patron. Um, but uh, yeah, there you go. Just not my cup of tea, mate. Um, if you have seen. Train from 2008 starring Thora Birch uh, and particularly if you like it then please do let Anders da uh, know down below uh, let him know what you think of the film uh, yeah sorry once again Anders for, for slating that I'm, I'm hoping you don't love this film because yeah I just but hey just because I don't like it doesn't mean you have to stop liking it so uh there you go. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Thank you, Anders, for, for your support. <laughs> I hope it continues. And until next time, cracking. <laughs>